what happens when we add water to a ketone or an aldehyde? Well, water will have trace amounts of hydroxide in it. That hydroxide comes into the carbonyl carbon, thrusts the electrons up onto this oxygen, generating this intermediate. The negative charge on the oxygen then steals a proton back from the water in the solvent and gives you this type of product. This product is called a hydrate. I'll explain in a few slides why this comp kind of, of compound is useful. And what if we add an alcohol to a ketone? Well, it behaves very similarly and converts this ketone into this type of compound called an acetal. And what is the mechanism? Well, first I begin with my ketone. I have to add trace amount of acid, the electrons on the oxygen in that ketone, and this could also be an aldehyde, by the way. Reach out and grab that acid, protonating the oxygen to give this intermediate. Once that intermediate is achieved, my alcohol will come in and attack at the carbonyl. Thus, the lone pair electrons on the alcohol oxygen come into that carbonyl carbon and push these pi electrons into that oxygen to neutralize the positive charge. That gives me this type of intermediate. At this stage, the electrons on this oxygen reach around and grab this hydrogen, thrusting these electrons into this positively charged oxygen to neutralize the charge. That then gives me this intermediate. At this stage, these electrons come down to form a double bond, and while doing that, kick off this H2O leaving group. That gives me this intermediate. H2O then goes into the solvent. At this stage, a second molecule of alcohol comes into the carbonyl carbon and thrust these electrons into the oxygen to neutralize that charge. That gives me this type of intermediate. To get rid of this positively charge or this positive charge on this oxygen, the water molecule that was generated in the previous step comes and deprotonates it and thrusts these electrons into that oxygen to neutralize that charge. That then gives me my final product which is called an acetal and releases protonated water, hydronium, as a byproduct. This source of acid can then act as the acid source to catalyze a second cycle of this reaction. I thought this would be a great time to throw some problems at you just to review some of the reactions we've covered so far and to show you that I care. I want you to figure out what the products are that I would obtain by reacting cyclohexanone with each of the following reagents. As I'm going to be giving you the answers to the first two of these questions momentarily, this might be a good time for you to pause the video and try these on your own before going on. So here's the answer to our first question. If I take a ketone and I react it with this amine, what product do I get? Well, you might, might remember that if I take ketones and treat them with amines, what I make is an imine. To keep a neutral charge on this nitrogen, I only want to have three bonds to it. So during the reaction mechanism, these two protons will ultimately be removed and released in, with this oxygen in, in the form of water. So this is the product that I get. Let's take a look at the next problem. If I take cyclohexanone and react it with this alcohol and trace amount of acid, what in the world occurs? Well, first of all, the alcohol will come into this carbonyl carbon, thrust the electrons onto that oxygen, while the oxygen itself gets protonated by the acid. This gives me this type of product. You'll notice that this product looks very similar to the acetal that we covered in the last slide. The difference, however, is that there is a hydrogen here on this oxygen instead of an alkyl group. This type of product is called a hemiacetal. The word hemi, or prefix hemi, means half. 
Thus, we could say that this is actually a half acetal. I think that if you say that quickly, multiple times, it gets funnier. If you continue taking this hemiacetal through the reaction sequence with this acid catalyst and more alcohol, it will ultimately make the complete acetal, which has two ethoxy groups here coming off of this carbon. I have not drawn that product in this slide, but I imagine that you guys can figure out that on your own. Here's another problem. How could I convert this pro our starting material into this product? You might remember from our earlier lecture in the last video slide that if I want to convert an ester into a primary alcohol, I have to react it with lithium aluminum hydride. Unfortunately, lithium aluminum hydride will also completely reduce this carbonyl down to an alcohol as well. So the question is, how in the world can I selectively reduce just the ester and not this carbonyl compound? I'm not going to give you that answer right now. I will momentarily. But I want you to at least be thinking about it and wondering about it so that when I tell you the answer in a couple of slides, it will actually stick.